Yes, five seconds. Let's start. Friends, I am very happy to meet so many of you who are working in this university and in its branches. It is a matter of joy for us that you people are getting the best training possible in the several subjects of your choice. You have greater opportunities than many of your fellow countrymen who have not got the privilege of coming out and getting trained by very competent men in such parts of England. I hope you are taking full advantage of your opportunities and when you return to our country, I hope you will be of great service to the development of our country. As you know, after we obtained our independence, our next problem was to fight poverty, to fight hunger and other evils from which millions of our people suffer. And we can remove these things only by the application of science and technology to agriculture and industry. And you who have come here, I have no doubt it will be of considerable use to us when you get back to our country and try to help us in rebuilding our economy. I was gratified here to see so many of you from so many parts of our country and it gave me special satisfaction to see a number of people from other countries who are also getting training here. It is a matter of great pleasure for me to see that you are all working together here in a spirit of understanding and harmony. It is my hope and desire when you return to our country you will forget your small differences of province, religion, language and districts from which you come and work together as belonging to one great country which has, in spite of all the changes through which it has passed, a great tradition that has come down. It gives you a sense of satisfaction that you are able to encounter all the troubles that faced you, able to survive and able to stand up even today to be a nation which is able to contribute its might to the development not only to the country but of humanity at large. That is what you should work for. The real troubles to any kind of progress in the world are due to exploitation of man by man, whether it is political or economic or racial. Unless we are able to remove this kind of exploitation, this world cannot settle down. We want to see a world that is a family of free nations cooperating with one another for the purpose of building up a happy home for humanity. University education has created some big problems. It has created a sense of independence in the minds of the students. Present day students revolt against regional disparities economic and social inequalities. Students deeply discuss and reason out things. In this jet age, radical changes are taking place and it is inevitable that we should move with the times if we are to catch up with other nations. It is the duty of the elders to understand them and appreciate their viewpoint. Mere sympathetic words will not solve the problems, but on the other hand, they create problems. We must look at things in a creative spirit and put the young men and women on jobs and give them ample scope to develop their personality in a right spirit. This will certainly help the nation. In this connection, it may not be out of place if a mention is made to the importance of discipline among younger generation. Of late, it has become a habit among student population to indulge in purposeless antisocial activities. All of you should realize that every hour and a day you lose will be a permanent loss in your life. This loss of time adversely affects not only your own progress but also of the country. It is Indian in its outlook and in its spirit. And every one of us must try to see the spirit of that culture which accepted differences, which never looked upon diversity as a source of discord but look upon diversity as something which contributes to the richness of the world. That is how we look upon the varying things which have taken habitation in our country. There is nothing for us to be ashamed about if you look at the fact that people belonging to different religions and speaking different languages are held together 
under single administration without any force etc but by means of persuasion and consent through the working of parliamentary institutions all that we should do is to strengthen this unity the sense of belonging to a whole a whole that belongs to every one of us and not to any particular province or any particular race or any particular religion you work together in great harmony here i do not see any reason why when you go back from this country you should not work together with the same spirit of harmony and the same spirit of harmony and friendship that is what is necessary there you must see to it that national coherence is kept up you must have the same sense that you belong to one family nationality doesn't mean hatred of other nations it means that you have the capacity to make your own contribution to the richness of the world it is that idea you must bear in your minds you must have your nation and feel proud that you belong to it that doesn't mean that you should hate other nations when you go back feel a sense of belonging to one nation try to look upon the inequalities injustices and disabilities from which large number of our people are suffering as your own that you have a call to remedy them and overcome them to do your best if one part of your body is injured if your finger is hurt it is not the finger that feels the pain but the whole body that feels the pain if any part of our people is oppressed or is put under disabilities it is not only those people suffer we all suffer the whole nation suffers and i want you to regard that as the greatest challenge you will have to face